<laughs> well, they're talking about a little snow next week, but we'll wait and see. Sister Jackie, would you open us in prayer? Father God, we are so thankful to be able to meet you today, Lord. We're thankful for this place that we have to come to, Lord, and how you provided the things that we needed to keep this place open, Lord. We just want to worship you this morning. We want to give you glory and honor, and we pray that everything that's said and done here today, everything, would bring glory to your name. Father God, we ask that you even though our pastor is not here, we ask that you just help him today, Lord, whatever the circumstances are, whatever he needs, that you would supply those needs, Lord. And Father, we just ask you to touch him with your mighty Holy Spirit this morning. Um, and breathe in that breath of life into him like never before. And Father God, we just pray that whoever the speaker today would be, whoever would bring the word, we just ask that you would just Put the words in their mouth that you want us to hear. Open our ears to receive and our hearts, Lord, to take it in and to go out and spread that word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> our <coughs> inspiration reading this morning comes from James, the uh, fourth chapter. The eighth verse says, Draw an eye to God. And he will draw nigh to you. And cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double minded. Going on up to the 13th verse. It says, Go to now, ye say to today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gains. <clears throat> Yesterday was my birthday, and I've been reflecting back <clears throat> over my lifetime, and it seems like it was just yesterday that I was a little poor. <clears throat> and this next verse talks about <clears throat> lifetime is just a vapor, and I'm here to tell you that's just about the way it is. That's true. It says, where is you know not what yet shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is ever a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanishes away. Yeah. For that you might, you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live, and to this or that. But now you rejoice in your, your boasting, all such rejoicing is evil. So don't be boasting, folks. We want to know what the next <laughs> minute doing. Today. And we all do it, don't we? Mm -hmm. Hope the Lord forgives me. And I know he does. Therefore to him that knoweth to, to do good and doeth not to him it is sin. Yeah. That's a pretty good reading today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone has a their offering this morning at the offering place back there by the door. And testimonies for birthdays. I got a birthday, so how about a birthday yeah, song? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. We're going to sing a birthday song for today. Uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, happy birthday. Hey, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. You've got to get out and do our part. 
<coughs> yeah, it, uh, anyone have testimony they like this? I just thank God that, you know, one day, I didn't know anything, really. I, I, I knew there was a God, and I knew that there was a Jesus, and I knew that Jesus loved me as a child because I went to Bible school. I had a lady that told me that. But did I understand it? No, not fully. But I'm glad that I did come to that understanding, and I'm glad that I gave my life to the Lord. Because it's such a better life. Such a better life. Amen. You know, and, and it makes me um, sad for those that have it. It makes me sad for those that are lost and out here looking for something. They don't know what they're looking for. It makes me even sadder that, like we just said, we're not out. And I'm not saying just this group. I'm saying the church is not out doing what they need to be doing. Because that's the only way people know. They see Jesus in us. They hear the word of God through us. Unless they're already born again, how are they going to hear? Unless we go share it. How are they going to see Jesus unless we go show Jesus? So I'm thankful that the Lord came into my life. And my desire for this year is to really be a worker for him. Anyone else have a testimony? I will. Um, as y'all met my granddaughter at Christmas, or, Christmas, or New Year's, um, before she had come, she'd been living with her grandma because her mother committed suicide. And um, life has not been easy for her. It's been a struggle. And she just turned 18. So when Christmas rolled around, she's like, Grandma's at church with them. I don't know. So we ended up over at the Methodist Church. And she said that's what she needed was a revival mm -hmm. for her because she's not even allowed to go to church. Mm -hmm. And now that she's home, the relationship between her and her grandmother, grandma's not ready to throw her out anymore. Praise God. So they're communicating. God can fix anything. <clears throat> I wish that our church was big enough, and I wish that we had enough people that we could offer more to young people. I really do, because the young people are the life of the church. But and she's got such a thirst mm -hmm. and such a you know desire to have it. Mm -hmm. She's not allowed to go. Yeah. I, put a, I took her shopping and I put a dress on her. She said, I can't wear this, Grandma. I said, why? She goes, because it's form-fitting. It's what? Form-fitting. It wasn't tight. It was actually one of my oldest dresses. And uh, it wasn't tight, but it was form-fitting. She said, I can't wear this. I said, you're not at home. You're going to get that on. She didn't even have a dress to go to church. Who she loved? She held her. Well, hopefully that all changes and that she gets in a good church there uh, that, that teaches the true word of God. That's that, That'll be our prayer. That she gets in a church that treach, te teaches and preaches the true word of God because, you know, a lot of people can be misled if they get in the wrong kind of church, so we want to pray that prayer for her, because we want her to know the truth, the truth yeah. sets you free. And she really enjoyed coming here and going to the Methodist church. She said, church is what I need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Thank God. That's awesome. Awesome. Anyone else have a testimony? <clears throat> Spirit that, that leads me and guides me, give me knowledge, judges me, keeps me on the right track, and I thank him for that. Yes. <clears throat> I was thinking the other, the other day about gifts. <clears throat> we all
all have gifts. Uh, and a lot of us don't pursue those gifts, but we all have gifts. The Lord gives us all gifts. Yes, he does. And, uh, and I'm thankful for what he did for me. I tell a little story. I'll try to make it short. I joined the Navy in 1958. And I was 18 years old, and pretty green, didn't know nothing. We went to the county pretty much. Went aboard ship. <clears throat> They offered me a school. I, when I went aboard ship, I, I told my division officer, if you have any schools available, I'd be interested. So, <clears throat> so he comes to me and said, I got a, a school for welding. And I uh, I didn't know nothing about welding. I, I was actually going to be a carpenter, a cabinet maker, was what my goals were when I was young, younger. Anyway, so I went to this welding school and it come easy to me. I made in the class, I was in the upper part of the class, and when I got out, I, went, I got back to ship, I practiced, and the Lord gave me the gift of welding, yeah. uh, and I thank him for that. When I, <clears throat> the last year I was born ship, I was the big welder on the ship, and it, it just come easy to me, and I thank the Lord for that. When I got out from the other Navy, this was my first job that I got and did. <clears throat> so, but what I did was, when I got out of school and went back to board a ship, they just taught us the fundamentals of school. I practiced every day. Every day I practiced probably about 30 minutes or so every day. And, then, and it was so easy to come to me. And I thank the Lord for that. And people, most people don't really, I don't, I shouldn't say that. <clears throat> you have to pursue your gifts. Yeah. And I mean, we all have them. We have, a lot of folks have more than one gift. Uh, it, it always hurt me that <clears throat> Sister Bobby's son, Larry, was the most gifted person that I've ever met, but he did, he did he didn't pursue any of his gifts. The Lord gave him all these gifts, and he didn't pursue them. And I, and I used to preach to him. Of course, it didn't do any good. But you know, I. But it's no big. Anybody else got a testimony? But but you were I do want to say you were talking about he practiced. 30 minutes every day. That's another thing. You have to practice your gifts. You can't just hold them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You go for them, you go after them, and you practice them because if you don't, you know, you just waste some time. It's a lot of time. But I have to say that now that my, my eyes are gone, so my welling now is, I just, I'm a doctor now. saved me a lot of money in my making stuff. And, uh, but, uh, now it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a dauber now, but. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some of your dauber. It's pretty good, man. So, <clears throat> so, you got some songs for us?
arrested one evening by the side of the road. I saw an old farmer in a field he just hoped. His face was all brown and wrinkled by the sun and the wind. And he was a talking to the Lord, just like he'd be talking to a friend. Well, he said with his voice calm and quiet, them corn tossels need a second. They got no string to tie. Had no rain in so long that the fields are mighty dusty. And it's been so unbearable hot that the kids are even getting fussy. Now that grass down there in that pasture, it should be knee high. If we could just get a little shower, Lord, it might keep the cows from going dry. Oh, but listen to me talking. You'd think I wasn't grateful. Why, if you didn't know me so well, Lord, you'd think I was downright hateful. You'd think I forgot about the new calf that you sent and the money in the mail that took care of the rent. Miles Cole's better, and Johnny's home from the Navy. And that good Sunday dinner of chicken, dumplings, and gravy. And that new preacher you sent us, Lord, he sure is a fine young man. Why, he's just converting them sinners to beat the band. Well, I guess I'll mosey on home now, Lord. I won't take up no more of your time. I guess there's plenty of folks around here waiting to ring your line. Evening to you, Lord, and watch over us tonight. Don't you worry about us now, Lord, because everything's going to be all right.
kind of move into praise and worship. And then we're going we're gonna to kind of end up with some joyful songs and we'll sing them. So, so rejoice. When upon my spillers you are ten.
when it is back then. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, we appreciate you. Thank you. Well, like I said, I didn't come prepared to preach this morning, but the Bible says the incident in season and out of season. Amen. And uh, yeah. all I can do is my best. I tell you what, I sure miss old brother man. You know, I, I miss him sitting over so much. Church, you need to pray for your pastor because he needs all the prayers he can get. You know, you was just talking about uh, the gifts and talents. When I was just a little kid, though, Bob growing up, I always wanted to be an artist, you know, draw. That desire was there to draw. My mother, she was a godly lady. She believed in uh, Pentecostal. But she didn't think if you did believe her way, you was, was going to go to hell. She didn't believe that way. And she'd always get these calendars from the electric calls company. You know, have the Lord plant, you know, praying upon the rock and garden. Mm -hmm. And every time I'd look at that, something would say, draw me. Draw me. I said, draw it. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't do that. He said, yes, you can draw it. That's, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And I sit down there, Brother Danny, and then I begin to look at that picture. I begin to draw it. It looked just exactly like him. Let me tell you something. I did it. And you can do whatever God told you, you know, that's what you can do. Amen. You sure can. Don't let the devil tell you you can't do anything for God because you can do it. Amen. And did you know that that picture that I drew, I took it around and showed it to some of my friends, and they couldn't believe I drew that. Let me tell you our God tonight is, I mean this morning, is an awesome God. Church, I tell you what, you just, nobody, I haven't mentioned this to nobody, not even my wife. One time, when I was 18 years old, Brother Bobby, I drunk seven bottles of peach brandy. I got alcohol poisoning. I said in that car, let's think, God was watching over me all these years. Just like he's watching the old girl once right there tonight. As I sit in that car, if I come by, the old road lines up like that, and said, boy, that, that kid's in trouble. You know, God's been so good to me, I can't count for everything that God's done for me. But he's never, never failed me. And he'll never fail you this morning. Church, don't you let the devil tell you that God will fail you because he won't. I know I'm not Brother Manuel, but I'm going to do my best for God this morning. That's all that I can do. Amen. But our God this morning is an awesome God. Amen. And uh, my desire when I was growing up was to be uh, an artist, Brother Bob. I used to draw, sit down, I used to like to draw these little cartoons, you know. Add them if I could, don't got pulled away. Keep on, kept on. <laughs> Did you know I got so good at that sister that I would just look just like it? Mm. I'm going to tell you something. Don't ever give up on your desires this morning. Mm. God's placed a desire in your heart to do it. Church, I'll tell you why. I begin to see it falling away of people not having a desire to want to do anything for God. I haven't been in church for what now, brother? About a month, brother Danny? That's because I've been sick and my wife's hearing aid busted on her. But God is still good. He's very good. He is. Amen. Amen. Will somebody please turn to Job for me? I can't see very good this morning. Job, the first chapter. Oh, come on, Don. You can find Job, at least. Job or Job? Job. Job. First chapter. I want to talk about a righteous man this morning. Now, if there was a righteous man, Job was a righteous man. Amen. But there came a time when the devil wanted to get to Job. Let me tell you something. The devil can't do no more to you than what God will allow him or what you will allow him to do. Sister, if he, brother, if he can get into your house, I'm going to tell you something, he can do a lot of damage. Yes, he did. The biggest thing I see in my home, 
I let you get in my home is the internet. Now that's the truth. Because the things on there, kids are not be watching. They are not be watching these naked people on there, church. They are not be on there talking to these guys that are 19, 20 years old, they're just 13 years old. They are not be doing that. Which is what was this lesson this morning? Spoil the rod, spare the rod, spoil the child. I said, if I had it my way, I'd take those cell phones and I'd smash them where they couldn't get a hold of them again. I said, you never know what kind of predators out there online trying to watch those kids. I got one right now, 17 years old, quit school, running the streets. I said, you need to be careful, young lady. Oh, Grandpa might be old, but I know I've been around, and there's predators out there watching you young kids. Church, yeah, they are. They're watching them young girls. Yes, they are. They always do. And it's very important that we need to be on our hands and knees praying. Have them in prayer, watching. Church, I'm going to tell you, the devil's out. He, you think he's out to play games? No, he's not out to play games. He's out to nothing but to kill, to steal, and destroy. I told my wife a lot of times, I said, you need to get back into church. When an unclean spirit, the Bible says, has gone out of a man. What does it say? He walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and can find none. Then he says this, I will go back unto my house, which I came from. When he comes back, sister, he finds the house empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, now listen to this, what it says, and gives seven more spirits, more wicked than he himself, and then they dwell thereat. And the last day of that man is seven times worse than before. Yes. Once there was just one evil spirit there, and now there's seven worse than him. You go, I, I'm, not, I'm just telling you what the Lord's left on my heart this morning. Hang on to God no matter what you're going through this, this morning. Oh, man, I'm, I'm beginning to get wound up. Thank God. All right. All right. I'll tell you All what. Right. I miss church so much, I just felt pumped back, sled. I told my wife, I said, no, I don't feel like going to church this morning, but I'm going to go. I said, because God's been good to me. He's been good to us. Our children may not want to serve God, but I'm going to serve him. They don't want to go to heaven. I'm going to go to heaven. Amen. Does somebody find Job for me? Would somebody please read that for me? I can't see too good this morning. Job, first, first chapter. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and chew evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Their substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen. Let me just stop there. I just took off of there. <clears throat> you know what the devil ain't after you this morning? He ain't been bothering you. Why not? Maybe it's because we haven't been doing anything for God. I can tell you why he's been after me. Because God's had his hand upon me since I was a child. I can remember when I went to go to the dentist office with my brother had a toothache. And he had this, what they call his church, Seven Day Advents. Had, Sister Jackie had a, had a book in there, a Bible, whatever. Every time I go in, I look at that. Look at that. All, all what always amazed me was about Adam and Eve at the tree. But I always look at that. He came out and said, since you like that book so much, I want you to take it home. Man, I walked home with that Bible like I had a prize in my arm, you know. See, God's got a way to get our attention. Job was a righteous man. Yeah, he was. And the devil will try to destroy you any way he can. Job. The devil said, God's, when the sons of God, now listen, when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, the devil went right along with them. Now that's what the word of God says. Read it. The devil went right alongside them. 
And God said, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth? One that walketh upright and this doeth evil. He said, yeah, I've considered him, but I can't get to him. He said, just take down the heads, let me get to him, and I'll show you a curse to your face. God said, all right, everything that he's got is in your hand. Don't you dare take his life. Amen. What happened? The minute the head just took it down, Job lost everything he had, his wealth, his riches, his children. But that didn't move Job one least little bit. Job said this, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Church, I tell you that's where we need to have our trust right now is in God. Amen. Not in man, but in God. I tell you what, I get so sick and tired watching the news. All the time you hear nothing on it, bad, 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 bad. But I like to read this right here. Because it's good, 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 good for your soul. Amen. This jacket will make you put a jump in your foot. Yeah. It'll make you want to shout when you're reading the word of God. Amen. I mean, I get very many amens this morning, but it's the truth. It is the truth. Praise God, everybody. I said, praise God. Praise Amen. God. The Bible says everything's got breath. Give God praise. If we don't praise God, the rocks will cry out. And, and, cry out. and I don't want some rock crying out in my name. I want to cry out to God. I made this habit. Sister, I set alarm clock for 15, 20 minutes. Well, I want to now, I make myself, I get up and I pray. Sometimes I weep and I cry before God. Have you ever heard someone say tears are a language that God understands? Yes. I pray for my kids. I pray for my wife. She's not here, but she, because her hearing aid exploded, she can't hear too good. But church, I want to tell you something. Our God is still an awesome God. He's still great and he's still good. Amen. Amen. Job stayed true to God. That's the secret to this whole thing. No matter what you may be going through, hold on to God. Don't let go of Him. Things may look black and bleak, but if God's got your hand, the storm may come today, but I'm here to tell you tomorrow is going to be sunshine. Praise the Lord. Oh, can't you feel the presence of God in this church this morning? Yes. Amen. Oh, I've still got 10 minutes yet. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God I've still got 10 minutes. Hallelujah. I mean, I know, I mean, I know what be the best preacher in the world. I may not be the brother Manuel, brother Troy, nobody. And I think brother Troy's a good man of God. I like to be here tonight. But I've got to take my wife sent this morning to get the ear doctor. But I want to tell you something. We all have got to do our best for God. We just can't right. sit there. Amen. We just can't sit there, sister. We got to do our best for God. I was thinking, listen, you playing those drums this morning. Oh, I wish I could play them drums like that. See, that had to be a gift from God. It was. Definitely. That's a blessing. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you what. Then there came a time when, after all this, uh, Job, you know, Job must have had some rowdy children. Because all they wanted to do was party, 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 party. And Job would always offer up the sacrifices and pray, you know, for them. said, could be my children have cursed God in their, in their hearts. Job lost everything he had. But like I said, it didn't move Job, not one least little bit. Job was standing on the solid rock, Christ Jesus. And then when he, the devil came again and said, the Lord said, you consider my servant Job that there's none like him in all the earth? Yeah, I consider him, but I can't get to him. He said, just take it down the hedge and let me get to him, and I'll show you a curse to your face. As soon as the Job was, the hedge took him down, the devil struck Job with bowls from the sole of his head, I mean, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. This didn't move Job. I tell you why, there's no excuse, because I haven't been coming to church. When I get sick, I know I should come on to church anyway. Why? Because this is a soul station church. Amen. This is where we get our souls fed at. Amen. Praise God this morning. I don't care if you want, if you want to sit there and not praise God. I'll praise him all day long. Praise God this morning. Amen. Praise God at noon. Praise God at dinner time. Morning, noon, and night. You bet. Even in your sleep, praise God. 
God gave me a message the other night when I was sleeping. You may not believe that, but he does. This word of God don't need nobody trying to help. This word of God stands alone, church. It is the foundation of our salvation. When you let down the word of God, you begin to give the enemy room. I tell you what, if you give him one inch, I said it's four, he'll take a mile. Amen. What happened with Job? Here said Job and pot and ash things. Taking a piece of uh, potter's clay, scraping the maggots off from him. Out of the boils that he had. You know the only one that, I'm not picking on you ladies, don't think that I am. I, I'm not picking on you. But the only one that the devil left to tempt Job was his wife. I'm not picking on you ladies. Don't get mad. Don't throw the rocks at me. <laughs> and Job said, said, she said, Job, does thou still retain thy integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? Yeah. I'm not throwing rocks, ladies. Y'all, you can pitch some back. <laughs> he said this, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, one time I was done in the hospital, heart 203 beats a minute. God's been good to this old boy. Amen. If you read the latter end of Job, God restored twice unto Job. In all the land where Job was at, there's no more fairer than the two daughters of, uh, three daughters of Job. He had seven sons and three daughters. God gave Job twice as much as he had. If you hold out faithful unto the end, you will see that our God is faithful Amen. and he'll bless you Amen. through everything that you go through. Amen. When the devil comes to you and he tells you, our oh, God's forsaken you, you know what you need to say? Yeah. Act like you're getting here by the back of the shirt collar and see the pants and you're kicking him down the road. <laughs> yeah, I've had that to happen. I was kind of mad one day out there, Brother Bob was unloading back my truck. Firewood. The devil just kept tormenting my mind, tormenting my mind. Brother Danny acted like this. Act like I got him by the back of the shirt and, and uh, kicked him down the road and said, Get out of here, devil. You ain't got no place in my life. Get out of here. I'm tired of it. Amen. Amen. I just went 12 o'clock. I still got 12 30. Is it all right? Amen. <laughs> you believe in letting God have his way or not? Amen. I'll tell you what, this old boy is kind of fired up this morning for God. Church, I want to tell you something. I used to preach everywhere all the time. But I'll tell you what, one day the devil hit me for everything he hit me with. I said, Satan, you hit me with your kitchen zinc, everything. Why don't you try something else? But I'll tell you what, my God is an awesome God. Amen. He's brought me through a lot. He'll bring you through a lot this morning if you'll just let him. Yes. Amen. 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 Now, God, let me tell you this about Job. I talk about Job. Stand on the promises of God and don't doubt. Amen. You might say, man, you're getting cowed out. Well, I think it's time the church gets loud for God. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's time that the church begins to praise God. Amen. I think it's the time that the church gets out there and goes into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Amen. Yes. i tell you what the devil liked to do. He liked to put us all asleep in God. I mean, asleep. Spiritually asleep. That's right. You know, when you're spiritually asleep, you don't know what's going on. That's right. You know, there's two ways you can also be drunk. Now, you listen to me, you may not think so, but there is. You can be physically drunk, or you can be spiritually drunk. Amen. That's true. Amen, oh me. Amen. Throw a rock you want to, but it's the truth. One time I had this dream, and I'll never go forget it. I'll close with this. I know everybody's quite tired. But I ain't tired. But <laughs> praise God. I just, well, praise God this morning, church, and I want to run. Yeah. I tell you what, we are to have us a Holy Ghost run away this morning. Amen. Have you ever seen that? Uh, I watched this this route on TV the other morning. Woo! <laughs> I watched this on TV. It's called the Apostolic Church. And I'm telling you, that girl was singing her heart out. 
people were jumping and they was acting like drunken men. Well, that's what happened on Dad Pentecost, wasn't it? Amen. Didn't they act like drunken men? Amen. Was that what happened? Let me tell you what happened. I see them on there and this Paul low out of the spirit and just praising God, worshiping God, doing this. I say, boy, I wish I could be in that service with those folks. I'd get in there and turn my, take my shoes off and dance with them. Oh, my goodness, can't you just feel the presence of God in this church this morning? Praise you, Lord. You know, I it used to be kind of nervous when Sister Robin and recorded me on Facebook, but I don't care no more. Let people say what they want to say. Because all I can do is my best for God. That's right. And that's all that God requires is our very best. Yes. When I stand before God, I want to hear God say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. I want to hear him say, Sister Rod Jackie, you've been faithful in a few things. I'll make you rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I want to tell you something this morning. There's joy in serving God. Amen. And there's excitement in serving God. Amen. Where's the excitement in the church at now, church? Amen. Where's the excitement at? I tell you where it's at. It's went cold. But we need to get back to the altar and begin to pray and get a hold of that altar and get to ask God for the joy and the presence and get stirred up for God again and give the devil another black eye. Amen. Amen. Yes. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this message this morning. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I used to be so bashful that she would record me on it, but I don't care no more. <laughs> I used to have people come and make fun of me. I said, well, why don't you get up and try that yourself sometime? <laughs> At least you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> if you know me 30, 30 years ago, I was ashamed to get out there and preach on the streets. Brother Danny, I seen God heal my little girl, Amanda. She's just six months old. She had double pneumonia. You may not believe this, but I'm telling you the honest guy's truth. Pick her up. She just fall back in your arms like a rag. I believe she was that close to death. Man, I said, Brother Timmy, I said, you're going to have to tell me to pray. I said, I can't take the doctor. I don't have no Medicaid card, no insurance. Let me tell you something. Prayer is better than going to a doctor. Yes. And uh, about that time, we begin to pray, and the Holy Ghost begins to take over. Oh, my goodness. When the Holy Ghost takes over, get out of the way. You know what happened? She began to pick up a little book. She couldn't do this before. But when we prayed, I mean the Holy Ghost came down and we prayed. Church, that's what we need to do nowadays. Pray, pray. Get a hold of the heart of the altar and pray. She began to pick up a little book. She couldn't even, before she couldn't get in a stroke going over. She's just lifeless. I mean lifeless. I seen God bring her from the point of death to where she is now. Oh, I'm telling you something I, this morning, church. You better begin to praise God now. Yes. Come on, don't get lazy on me this morning. Yes. Let's praise God for everything we got. Jesus. You may say, man, you get kind of hard, ain't you? I think it's time to get hard to tell people, hey, you need to be to get with all hearts and all and begin to pray for people. Yes. Pray for those that are dying going to hell. They need it. I don't know about you this morning, but I needed to get to praise. Thank you, Brother Danny. Thank you. I needed to get to preach this word of God this morning. It did me good. We need it too. Boy, I tell you what. I told Sister Rod, I told Brother, Brother Denny, I said, the nights are getting longer. I'm going to try to start coming over here at nighttime. Like I said, I'd like to hear Brother Troy preach tonight. But I've got to go to St. Louis in the morning, take my wife up to St. Louis, get her cochlear implant refixed. It's broke. She can't hear. But church, I'm telling you something that I believe. you got to believe this now. What does the Bible say? When you pray, believe. Yeah. Didn't say doubt. Did it say doubt? No, it didn't say doubt. He said, when you pray, believe that you shall have those things. You shall have them. Amen. You got to pray. I've got a brother right now, stage four cancer of the liver. If God don't move, he's got just a short time to live. But I want to tell you something. If he goes home, He's in a lot more better place than we're at. But God, know, I know my God. 
is able to give him a brand new liver. I know he can do it. I know God's able to heal me, and he has. Oh, uh, church, I want, to, I want to thank you this morning. Let me get to preach here. I really do appreciate Amen. this. I'll tell you what, it's been, been a little bit of fire down this old boy's bones. Hallelujah. It's been a little bit of fire, a little bit of joy. I want more than just a little bit of joy, Sister Jackie. I want the fullness of the joy. Yeah. I want the excitement back in God in my life. Yeah. You know, there is, there is excitement in serving God. Yes, it's just not coming to church and going, well, they sung too long, the preacher helped me about 20 after, I think I'm going to go home. No. Where's the excitement at? Amen. Where's the excitement of God in the church at anymore? Amen. I tell you what happened. We allowed the joy of God to leak out of our hearts. A lot of times I prayed this prayer that David's prayed. Oh God, created me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me, Lord. Make me white again, God. God, and take not thine Holy Spirit from me. Now, church, I'm going to tell you something. I can tell you about a man in the Bible that messed around the flesh too long. And the Spirit of God did depart from him. Help me out somebody. I can't remember. What was his name? He's in Judges. Samson. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. There's pleasure in sin. Yeah, there is. But it's only for a season. That's Amen. Right. That's right. It's only for a season. That's all he did. See, he was supposed to be a Nazarite from his mother's birth. He was not to shave off his hair. He was not drinking stone drink, anything like that. What did Samson do? He went and did the opposite thing. He saw this uh, woman named Delilah. He told his friend, said, get her for me, for she pleases me well. Little did he know, but that's what the enemy was about to trap him with. Church, I want to tell you, it's a scary thing. Yeah, it is. When you pray, you can't get a hold of God. Jonah, I mean, uh, Samson, she, did, he, she tempted him in a lot of ways. But one time, he told her the truth, the ball's heart. He said, if you'll just shave the hair off my head, I'll become weak and just come as other men. And she said, she got him to go sleep, and the Bible says that she began to afflict him. Yep. What did he do? They took the razor, she, and she shaved him. She said, Samson, the Philistines be upon me. He said, I'll just shake myself as other times. I'll just go out as before. What happened? This time, the presence of God is not there to set him free. Amen, oh me, I don't care. Say it. It's the truth, the truth. Amen. Good. And what the Philistines do to Samson? Brother Bobby, they bound him. Cut out his eyes. Put him in the mill house, going round and around, grinding corn or whatever, like a horse. He'll go around. <coughs> But all this time, since him, I believe he began to repent, hair began to grow back. Oh, church, if we'll just repent and turn and serve God this morning. That's what a lot of people need to do, just repent and turn and serve God. God's our only hope. He's our only salvation. There's no other salvation. And they put, bring on sense that bring on sense that we may make sport of him. You don't think the devil won't want to kill you? Yeah, he wants to kill you. He wants to take everything you got. And then he wants to say, look there, God loves your servant. But I tell you what, by the grace of God, he's not going to do that to this old boy. Amen. But I'm telling you, by the grace of God, and I'm praying for everyone who's in this church. And I'm praying this little church will grow. Man, I would like to see this little church like it was. On fire for God, people jumping and shouting when the preacher's preaching. I would love to see that again. You know, I'm more of all, I, I would love, sister, to see the excitement and joy come back in my heart like it was once there before. I've asked God for that. 
But the excitement of God in our hearts, why ain't it there anymore? It's our fault. It's not God's fault. The Bible says this. If you'll draw nigh to God, that's what it says. He said, I'll draw nigh to you. And I tell you what, I've been trying to draw nigh to God, getting up every morning, praying, and asking God, God, give me a stronger message. I want a stronger anointing, God. I'm just tired getting up here and saying a few things. Did you know it's the anointing that breaks the yoke this morning? Yes. Uh, maybe I'm not Brother Manuel. Maybe I haven't done a very good job. But I tell you what, I give my heart to God this morning. That's all that counts. Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Amen. Church, I can't find no stopping spot. <laughs> I want to, but Jesus, it's been so long since I got to preach. But our God this morning is an awesome God. Yes, he is. When Samson got his hair back, got his strength back, See, I kind of feel sorry for Samson in a way because Samson was to be a deliverer of the children of Israel from the Philistines. He asked the little lad, said, uh, bring me between the two pole, pole pillars that held up the building. The Bible says that the, uh, the power of God came back upon him. That's, see, everybody's got Samson all made up that big, big old muscle-bound thing. I don't believe that one least a little bit. I believe Brother Bob is probably just like me and you. I believe in the, 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 it was the power of God. The power of God came upon him. That's when his great strength lieth. Yes. The Bible says that he pushed all his might. And then the building fell down. What did it do? It killed all the Philistines. And it also took Samson's own life. All the church, I want to tell you something. Don't you ever give up on God. Don't you let the devil tell you, hey, you can't make it. Because you can make it this morning. Through the grace and help of God, you can make it. Amen. Praise God this morning, church. Amen. Before I leave here this morning, does anybody need prayer? Anybody? Anybody need prayer? I'm here this morning. I've got the power. I feel the power of God all over me this morning. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother Denny, I guess I'll turn it back over to you or one of you other sisters. Don't you love the Lord this morning, church? Yes. Aren't you glad you're a child of me? Yes. Yes. God bless you, brother Dan. Lead, guide, and direct.